Welcome to another D7 video where I'm going to showcase to you some more of D7's malware removal capabilities. Um, if you'll notice, I have uh, this particular system infected uh, with several samples, one of which is uh, Windows Fixed Disk. It's going to be a fraudulent um, uh, 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 disk program of, of some sort. Uh, the only thing it's uh, really done is nag me and hide all of my files. You'll see there there are no files here and um, what uh, nothing in the start menu. Um, what I just need to do is unhide or at least show hidden files so I can get to D7 because I'm not running it from a flash drive in this particular case. Okay. And now we're going to go straight to the malware tab. Um, one of the first things you'll notice at the top left is D7 auto mode. There's a start button and this is going to of course run every item that is checked in the list in order top to bottom left to right. Um, now one of the things that you may not have known or, or just something to keep in mind for the future if uh, or as the, uh, rather as the items are run uh, the checkbox unchecks but um, if you've decided that you want to run an item twice or you've forgotten an item um, at any point in time in D7 auto mode you can go back and check an item and then it will be queued up next in um, D7's uh, uh, malware removal routine um, so that's pretty neat, but let's go ahead and get started with the malware removal. Just click the start button and now we're already at the pre-malware scan. Um, pre-malware scan uh, actually um, deletes all of the previously blacklisted malware from uh, malware scan. Anything that you've blacklisted. I'll just slide that to the side. And uh, before I dive into the nodes here on the left, I just want to point out that we're operating on the C partition. Um, that's not really pertinent information. I mean, you knew that. This is a live Windows system. What uh, you may not have known is that D7 is also capable of running malware scan on an offline uh, installation of Windows. Uh, for example, if you have a, a client's hard drive attached to a TechBench computer designed for scanning purposes, or you're booted to a Windows PE environment, um, you can also use D7 malware scan on different partitions. But we'll cover that in a different video. Um, one thing I do want to cover before we move on is the malware scan definition update. Um, essentially, I have a network share in here and what you want to do is create a central repository for all of your D7 definitions and and by that I mean you may have um, D7 definitions on a flash drive, you may have D7 running from a TechBench computer, uh, you may have multiple technicians with multiple copies of D7 all over the place. What you want to do is keep all of those definitions in sync with each other and you can do that by selecting a centralized network share um, to, to serve as a repository to synchronize all of these definitions together. Together. So um, I believe D7 will nag you uh, if you don't sync your definitions once a week. Um, I might be mistaken about that, but I believe that's about the time frame I selected. Uh, in any case, um, we'll move on. Starting with the miscellaneous tab, um, we have several values here. Um, all of these values have a default and just about anything outside of the default is malware, um, uh, sometimes except in the case of the GNET DLL or AppNet DLLs, um, uh, and in very rare cases the shell value, but um, you are not likely to see that on an end user's computer. Uh, so what I've done here, I'm just going to pretend that some malware has infected the user init. Um, I've got foo x exe that I that I just typed in there. Um, now user init says check beside it. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the label is also supposed to turn red, and I have not uh, uh, apparently done something right in the code there. But um, once you see that the value needs to be checked, you can uh, take a look at it. You can just click use default and it'll put the default value in there. 
just be sure and apply the changes before you leave this tab because these are not saved in real time so uh, you definitely want to apply all of those changes or they will be lost. Moving on um, we've got run keys and of course I've got some malware in here a uh, nice random file name there. Now these run keys are gathered from uh, they're run, run once, um, et cetera, et cetera. They're gathered from local machine, current user, and all user profiles on the system. I like to have everything on one screen at one time. Um, so we're going to uh, uh, examine this item. I will say is in red, not because it D7 suspects it's malware. No, I'm afraid D7 is not that smart but um, it does deserve extra scrutiny because the item is hidden um, and that's why I have it in red. Uh, I feel like anything that wants to hide itself deserves a second look um, and in this particular case this is most definitely malware so I'm just going to delete that and delete any associated files of course. Aha! Uh -huh, I forgot to check it. We get an access is denied because the file is in use, but just click OK. And D7 is able to terminate the process and delete the file. OK. Um, before I continue, I just want to explain a little bit of the theory in case you haven't figured it out. Um, blacklisting an item is of course taken care of by the pre-malware scan uh, so so the blacklisted items are automatically deleted by the time you get to the malware scan window now whitelisting is the other concept um, this is something that uh, uh, I feel isn't done enough of in the, um, uh, the malware fighting world um, what I like doing is um, whitelisting everything that I know is good so I don't have to look through known good entries uh, just to weed out the bad ones um, I'd rather have I'd rather not look at the good ones either um, I just want to look at what D7 doesn't recognize and that's sort of the theory behind malware scan as a whole um, oh and before I move on FYI this is D7's value it places this uh, itself in the run once uh, key and, and that's something I'll um, uh, describe to you at a later time but let's move on services um, this is an example of dllhost.exe this is an example of a file that is hidden by the malware so it's not necessarily a bad file just serves you uh, a reminder that not everything hidden is bad not everything red is bad um, we're going to move on and now we have um, an unrecognized service well I recognize uh, KLMD and uh, you probably do as well um, this is a, a section of D7 that needs a little work um, this particular registry key uh, requires you to take ownership first then take uh, go back and assign yourself permissions and then you're able to delete the registry key now D7 attempts to do this for you so I am just going to try to delete however D7 does fail um, so I'm going to highlight go open reg path um, I will tell you that uh, D7 was good enough to take ownership as you can see the current owner is is myself um, D7 was good enough to assign permissions I don't know why it was not able to actually delete the value after taking ownership and assigning permissions um, that's just a bug I need to work out but I'm gonna refresh this and you'll note the value is here again but it is in control set 002 um, if I go open reg path, delete, and we're gone. Um, BHOs, boot execute, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to find anything else on these in particular infections. Um, hosts file, no matter what uh, system you're on, you've got a host file. Um, 
normally the default host file is uh, of course 127.0.0.1 localhost. Um, anytime you're here and you see a bunch of uh, gibberish entries or, or redirections to malware sites, you can simply click overwrite with default host file and it will create that 127.0.0.1 localhost um, file with with uh, just that in it. If you're on Vista or Windows 7, um, it will also put an entry in there colon colon one for your IPv6, uh, but that is not the case here. We're running XP and IPv4. Okay. Um, out of place files. Uh, this is another concept that uh, I'd like to explain to you. Um, Looking through a file system manually, you you kind of get a feel for what is not in the right spot. Um, there are several locations, um, like in this particular one, Documents and Settings, All Users, Application Data. Um, there's an executable there. Well, I'm, you would expect to see executables and DLL files in subfolders of application data, but not in application data itself. So that file, to me, is out of place. Um, and that's how I've programmed D7 to find out of place files, things that don't look right to me. Um, so once I uh, delete this file which I think you'll see if I click on it has that icon that familiar icon there um, I'll just go ahead and delete that we get the access denied error uh, be because the file is in use it so just click OK ah and the file is gone um, our system tray icons disappear the malware has disappeared and uh, everything is peachy. Now we would be done with this part of the removal but I'm going to explain a few more things to you. Um, I hope you've deleted your temp files before you got this far because the temp directory scan uh, finds all executables and DLL files in um, the various temp directories throughout the file system. Um, Basically, yes, there are a lot of legitimate files that will live there, but after you delete all of the temp files and you're doing nothing but running uh, malware removal, you're probably going to find that there's nothing left in the temp directories but li live running malware, um, in which case uh, it will be reported to you here. Um, our next item is find new files, which of course there are going to be plenty of new files uh, on, a, on a new Windows installation, so I'm going to skip over that for now. Windows directory files, Windows uh, System32 drivers, and the Windows System32 files, um, these are um, Basically, this is just just a, a straight up whitelist concept. Um, do uh, white. Uh, what you want to do is uh, get a clean machine and whitelist absolutely everything you possibly can on a known clean machine. That's going to um, basically just cut out a lot of the crap. We're going to look at what's left over. Um, in this particular case, uh, I'm, I'm running the System32 file scan. This really does take 5 to 10 minutes, so I'm going to do a quick time lapse on this video, grab a sip of water, and I'll be right back. 